Hello, I'm here to see Dr. Reed. Yes, please proceed to room 3, and the doctor will be right with Hello, Carla. I would like to introduce you to Dr. JD, my intern, and Dr. Perry, the on-call resident. I understand you are experiencing some pain in your chest? Yes, for the past week I have felt pressure and discomfort in my chest. Have you felt any symptoms similar to the ones of a stroke, such as numbness in your arms or legs, slurred speech, drooping on one side of the face, or vision loss in one eye? No, I have not. What about claudication, which is a pain caused by little blood flow, which is usually found in the arms or legs during exercise? No, I have not experienced this. Okay, Carla, that's good to hear. We're just going to test your blood pressure to ensure the pain you're feeling is not due to this. Blood pressure is 140 over 90, which is slightly high. Carla, I have on your record that you are a smoker, and in the past you have had problems with high cholesterol and blood pressure. Have you taken control of these things? I can't say I have. Smoking causes damage to the artery walls and makes it easier for plaque to build up. Exercise helps prevent atherosclerosis in a number of ways as it keeps the arteries healthy by lowering bad cholesterol and increases the amount of good cholesterol. Exercise also reduces risk factors that may cause atherosclerosis and blood clots such as high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, and stress. Exercise can also help produce better circulation within the body as increased blood flow will prevent clotting. Along with exercise, a change in someone's unhealthy diet can help reduce their likelihood of heart disease. As a diet that is high in saturated fat can raise your cholesterol levels, Carla, you are a very high risk patient for atherosclerosis. Well, what is this? What's it called? Arteriosclerosis? Atherosclerosis! First, let's get some terms out of the way. An artery is a blood vessel that carries high pressure blood away from the heart. There are three layers of an artery, and the lumen is the hole in the blood vessel through which blood travels. An arterial is a smaller branch of an artery carrying slightly lower pressure blood. The inner, middle, and outer layers of an artery are called the tunica interna, tunica intermedia, and tunica externa. Arteriosclerosis occurs in the walls of the arteries when the tissues become thick and stiff. There are three main types of this disease. Arteriolosclerosis, atherosclerosis, and calcific sclerosis. Arteriolosclerosis is the thickening of the walls of the arterioles. Atherosclerosis takes place in the tunica interna when a deposit of fats and plaque builds up, restricting blood flow. Calcific sclerosis takes place in the tunica intermedia when calcium deposits build up and muscle and elastic collagen are damaged. What you are at risk for is atherosclerosis. It is a specific type of arterial sclerosis where the arteries become thick and stiff due to the gradual buildup of plaque within the lumen of the artery. Atherosclerosis is considered a heart problem but can affect any artery in the body. In your case, since you are not experiencing warning strokes called temporary azymic attacks, if caught early, does not cause permanent damage and is thus not harmful. So, there's a good chance the arteries leading to your brain are not blocked. As well, if atherosclerosis is present in the arteries that lead to your arms or legs, you would experience symptoms like claudication or cramping, which would occur when using the muscles in your legs due to the little blood flow, which you are not experiencing. You are experiencing anginus, which is the most common symptom that the arteries leading to your heart are blocked. What is causing the block? Plaque is a substance made of cellular waste, fibrin, calcium, cholesterol, white blood cells, living and dead, and other fats. This buildup in the arteries narrows the lumen, constricting the blood flow, and increasing pressure because of the narrowed volume of the artery. Also, artery walls are made of cells that need oxygen and other substances to live. In smaller blood vessels, the tissues making up the vessel rely on oxygen diffusing through the walls. If the inner wall, called the tunica interna, is covered by plaque, the oxygen cannot diffuse through and the cells will deteriorate due to lack of nutrition. Okay, Carla, since you are a high-risk patient for atherosclerosis, we have booked you an angiography test on April 29th at 2 p.m. Oh, wow. Is this an invasive test? Unfortunately, yes, it is. However, this is our best option to properly diagnose atherosclerosis and determine the places the plaque has built up. We cannot do a low-risk test, such as an electron beam computed tomography, a stress test, a carotid artery ultrasound, or a blood test to properly diagnose you.
No need to worry, Carla. A thin tube will be placed inside an artery in the leg or arm, and it is guided through the branches in the arteries. Then a blue dye is injected, which displays the arteries and where the blockages occur. We will have the results back and analyzed on May 2nd. We will see you back in the office then. Okay, doctors, are you ready for Carla's angiography? Okay, after analyzing the results of the angiography we have taken, sadly, Carla does have atherosclerosis of the coronary arteries. Oh my, what do we do from here? No need to worry. I would start off with changing your lifestyle. Quit smoking, reduce your amount of saturated and unsaturated fats you are consuming, and start exercising regularly. This will decrease your chance of many complications that you could face as a high-risk atherosclerosis patient. At the moment, without any treatment, you are at risk of experiencing a heart attack, heart failure, stroke, decreased circulation, kidney malfunction, and severe internal bleeding. I understand this is a lot to process, but changing your lifestyle is a great start to treating what you have. As well, many types of medication prescribed can usually slow down or even reverse the effects of atherosclerosis. We are going to start off by prescribing cholesterol medication. Cholesterol medication can slow down, stop, or even reverse the buildup of fatty clumps within someone's arteries. To start off, you are going to take statins, which are the safest and best tolerated medication to lower cholesterol, but some patients do not respond well to this therapy. Another option you have is to take fibrates, which help reduce the body's cholesterol production, but they aren't as effective. As well, we will start you on aspirin, which will reduce the chance of blood clots forming. We'll book another appointment in four months in case this medication doesn't work. In that case, surgical approaches will be taken. One type of surgery that a patient can undergo is called a bypass surgery. This operation will create a graft bypass using a vessel from another part of the patient's body or using a tube made of synthetic fabric. This operation allows the blood to flow around the blocked or narrowed artery. I know the complications seem scary, but we are going to do everything in our power to help treat you. Doctors, I was researching some of the possible complications that can arise from having atherosclerosis. I heard it can cause chest pain, a heart attack, or even heart failure. Also, I could get something called a carotid artery disease, which can lower my blood flow to my brain. I also didn't know that I could have a higher chance of burns and frostbite because of peripheral artery disease. On top of that, I also heard I could get an aneurysm, which could burst and cause severe internal bleeding. Recently, I also read that I could get chronic kidney disease, which could affect my kidney function and keep waste from exiting my body. Is all of this true? Yes, Carla, all of these things are true, but this is why you need to change your lifestyle and follow the treatment plan we have provided you. This way we can ensure you are living a healthy, long life. Carla was on her way to a speedy recovery. One month later, she started regularly exercising. As well, she started eating cleaner. Carla is partaking in many healthier life options to ensure she can live a long life.